Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. And before this video gets started, if you're wondering why I have a suddenly new format, I actually sent in my computer to Apple to get it fixed. The battery really wasn't working over the past two years and they decided right before my Apple Care warranty that uh, I should actually get it fixed. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that they have not even shipped it out to Apple. I returned it to my local FedEx drop-off location on Saturday, and it is Wednesday today, and it still has not been returned. I've been gone in Miami for uh, the past four days, from Saturday to Tuesday, and I'm officially back. So if you're wondering why the thumbnails may have looked a little bit different, or the videos were sometimes a bit off-dated, it's because I pre-recorded uh, about six to seven videos that I released after my flight had departed, uh, and were already made prior to the weekend, and were released over different periods of days. Uh, so pretty much this channel has been on a mini hiatus for me personally, but my content hasn't really stopped. And even though my channel is something that uh, I definitely prioritize, there are times where there will be lapses in video content, like today, where I did not publish a video until now, which I'm expecting to be maybe 10 to 10.30 p.m., unfortunately, uh, but I'm working with what I have right now. So I'm using my Windows computer, and I typically don't use it for recording. I almost always use it for live streaming, if you guys remember. Um, I'm usually sitting here doing my live stream. I don't record right here. I usually record in my bedroom. Um, but we are going to be just jumping right into today's video. The voice, uh, the video camera probably won't be staying for the remainder of the videos. Uh, if you want me to keep it, I will. I decided to try something a little bit new, and it's something that a bunch of other people in politics have decided to do. So I thought maybe for the sake of just one or two videos that I would decide to do it, and if you guys like it, I will keep it. Or if it's too distracting, I'll decide to remove it and go back to my traditional format. But in getting into today's video, we are talking about the Democratic Party and the Republican Party and how the party preferences here have shifted since uh, the beginning of this past election year, 2021. Now, Gallup routinely does monthly polling. They actually are very helpful when it comes down to tracking the American public and their political preferences for the upcoming election. And looking at 2021, what you will find is that from the beginning of the year, the Democratic Party went from what their highest point was since the fourth quarter of 2012, meaning uh, the month or two after that Barack Obama had won the election. They had been polling residents across the nation saying, how do you identify? And the Democrats had a nine-point advantage over the GOP, and they had that in the, in the beginning of 2021. Then, as the months went on, Joe Biden began to deteriorate. Democrats began to fall out of favor. And by the end of this year, as of right now, the fourth quarter of 2021 averages out to 47% of the American public identifying or leaning towards the Republican Party and just 42% going towards the Democrats. What was a nine-point lead for the Democrats has now gone to a five-point GOP lead, ultimately resulting in a 14-point swing across the nation. Such a significant swing in just a brief period of time. And if you actually think about what had happened between the beginning of 2021 and what had happened at the end, what you saw was the Georgia runoff elections on January 5th, 2021, where Democrats were soaring high. I mean, they were adored by the American public simply because Joe Biden was remaining popular. By the time uh, he had been inaugurated, that early January uh, bump for the Democrats with the Georgia runoff elections was enough to carry him into one point what was a 20-point net approval across the nation and carried him for the month all the way up until about August when the issue of Afghanistan resurged across the nation and the economy and COVID-19. We are right around the Delta variant becoming a reality and things starting to become very different across this nation compared to what it was like over the summer. And from there, Joe Biden began to fall consistently out of favor. But what you saw again was, remind yourself, the Georgia runoff elections where Democrats just flipped control of the United States Senate until less than a year later, where Republicans flipped the attorney general's race in Virginia, flipped the lieutenant governor's race in Virginia, flipped the governor's race and the House of Delegates. Not to mention the New Jersey governor's race, where yes, the Democrats did get their first re-election in 40 years. But what happened was, the fact is that the Georgia, uh, sorry, the uh, uh, New Jersey election ended up being a lot closer than expected and was decided by about four percentage points in a state that usually is so significant lo significantly lopsided towards the Democratic Party. So in seeing the U.S. party identification and leaning quarterly averages here, one thing that you can see consistently is that the Democrats deteriorated. 
I mean, they went from the second quarter uh, with the GOP slightly resurging to the third quarter where it was near neck and neck. And now the Republicans hold a five point advantage in terms of the average. Now, it doesn't look as bad for Democrats today as it did maybe in November, right after the uh, Virginia race went red and Republicans seem to be doing much better. It says that uh, right now in the most recent poll in December, let's go ahead and see here if we can find it. Uh, but it will tell you that 46% of the nation still leans with the GOP or identifies with them, meaning they have the advantage to 44% for the Democrats. But I can tell you that that's better than being down five points. I mean, being down five points is uh, definitely you know worse than being down uh, two points. But one thing that I do want to say as well is that the uh, beginning of the year was when the Democratic Party really was expecting to turn 2022 into a referendum against President Trump, just as they did the uh, 2021 Georgia Senate runoff election. And that doesn't seem to be a winning strategy because what we saw is that Democrats, you know, completely tired out that message. They used it so much in the Virginia race, rally after rally, ad after ad, you know, lit drop after lit drop, canvasser after canvasser. At the end of the day, it became tiring. It became uh, boring and annoyance for people to hear every single Republican, no matter who it was, Glenn Youngkin, uh, you know, anyone else, Kelly Leffler, David Perdue, that type of rhetoric attaching any and every Republican to President Trump in an effort to try to cling them on to an unpopular person began to lose its relevance. You know, in the American political system, you cannot repeat things too much because then it loses its significance. If every day you are hearing from the Democratic Party, okay, this Republican is like Trump, this Republican is like Trump, this Republican is like Trump, what you find is by the time the election comes, that message isn't effective because now you need to add to it. If this was the thing that was supposed to sink every single Republican Party, uh, you know, ticket through the uh, Biden states and through the swing states, then why not wait to use it? You know, attack the Republican Party on things that actually matter instead of waiting or instead of using something that you meant to use as the finishing blow, as you did with Kelly Leffler and David Perdue. And at that point, it was a little too late for the Democratic Party. And I'm not here to give campaign advice. What I'm here to do is explain why this might be. And we already know that Joe Biden is unpopular. In fact, today, Joe Biden hit a new level of unpopularity. Uh, you know, since I was in uh, you know, creating videos for you guys last week, Joe Biden wasn't as bad at, uh, as, mm, at a point as bad today as he was just five days ago. I mean, if you take a look at the change, Joe Biden went from being disapproved of by, you know, still a pretty consistent amount, about nine points here, to now being uh, disapproved by 10 points more than he is approved of, plus some, right? He had never hit negative net double digits according to 538 until now. I mean, it's literally something that has just happened in the past two to three days. It happened on Real Clear Politics, but then it bounced back, and then it caved back upwards, and we'll see what happens moving on from this point. But the point is that on 538, this simply has not been a reality until now. And you can see why the Democratic Party might ultimately be falling out of favor with the uh, American public. Because what was supposed to happen after the Democrats won control of the House again, after they had continued their majority from 2018, after they uh, somehow flipped control of the United States Senate, despite them losing nearly every other swing race. I mean, you look at this map and you see a bunch of losses for the Democrats. You see, uh, you might not be able to see that because of my face camera, but if I'll show you down here, uh, if you look where my mouse is, they lost Montana, right? They lost a race that they spent a lot of money in. They lost Alaska. They lost Iowa. They lost North Carolina. They lost South Carolina. They lost Kentucky. They lost Maine. Now, not every single one of these states was meant to be a swing state, nor should it have been treated as a swing state. But what did happen was that the Democratic Party invested a lot of money into many of these races and simply did not win them. But then Georgia came through and they won control of the United States Senate after winning the presidency from Donald Trump. So knowing all of this, the Democratic Party was supposed to have some type of uh, mandate. They were supposed to have some type of ability to persuade Congress uh, to move in a certain direction to back the ideals that the Democratic Party put forth. I mean, if you think about it for just a moment, regardless if you are a Democrat, independent, or a Republican, I want you to think and brainstorm uh, for just a second to think about what do you remember about the Biden administration? What do you remember about their major accomplishments over this year? A lot of it is related to COVID-19. I am someone who gives credit when credit is due. What do I see? Well, I see 200 million Americans vaccinated in the time it was supposed to take, you know, just 100 million Americans to get vaccinated. What I see is stimulus checks that were sent out as promised, not necessarily to the fullest extent, but that's up for some debate and that's not for this discussion. What I see is that Joe Biden crack down in terms of federal mandates, in terms of ensuring that mask mandates stay on federal property, you know, things of that nature. 
are things that I see Joe Biden doing. And those are all promises that he made. But that's not enough. COVID-19 won't be an issue, hopefully, uh, you know, God willing, in 10 years from now. But what will be an issue is the economy. What will be an issue is healthcare. And what will be an issue and has been an issue now and since forever in American history, voting rights and voting rights legislation. The Democratic Party has failed to deliver major substantial victories. And Republicans are here. And they are going to campaign and have been campaigning on this idea of pushing back against the radical left against critical race theory, and against a government that cannot get things done. And whether true or not, and that's something else up for another discussion in another video, it's an effective way of campaigning. This doesn't just happen overnight. This change, according to Gallup, is something that the American public has to have, obviously, very big part in. They can't just botch these numbers and put it out there, because we have seen the change. We've seen the change in the sentiment over the Senate elections. This is the beginning of 2022, and this is the beginning of 2021. What happens is Pennsylvania goes back to the GOP, Georgia and Arizona go to the GOP, and so does the state of Nevada. These are states that the Democratic Party just a year ago knew that they were able to win in 2020 and could very well win in 2022. Or maybe they were just being too optimistic. At that point, the Democratic Party should have been happy with where they were in many of these states. I mean, truly speaking... They were on track to win Georgia again. They were on track to win Arizona again. They were on track to flip Pennsylvania, hold on to New Hampshire, hold on to Nevada. But things fell out of their way. So you have seen this dramatic change in public sentiment towards the Democratic Party, and it can be very much explained by the inability of the Democrats to get things done. And whether that's because they're being held up by Kirsten Cinema or Joe Manchin isn't my argument to make towards any type of voter. Because what the American public knows is that there is one party in control and there doesn't seem to be getting many things done. I mean, even if someone closely follows the issue of the filibuster, closely follows the issue of, you know, Republicans blocking legislation intentionally, which is something that has only become a more recent occurrence over the past 20 to 30 years compared to previous electoral history, even if they follow that. They know that Democrats have the ability to change the filibuster rule. And if they're siding with the Democrats in previous elections, they might be saying, why won't you do it? They understand that Manchin and Cinema don't want to, but the fact is that there doesn't seem to be as much pressure on them as there should be, at least for members of the left wing. And no matter what, you aren't going to make people happy when you simply cannot pass legislation. When you ran on a platform, you know, D.C. will become the 51st state. Puerto Rico will become the 52nd state. We will have radical change in this country, but not radical in the way that is used in a negative way, but in a way that progressives use to mean substantial. And it's something that they simply aren't seeing happen. That's why Biden is falling out of favor. I mean, just a year ago, we were talking about how Biden could potentially sweep the Electoral College in 2024 by a larger margin than what he won in 2020, simply by winning all the states that he did, even the swing states and expanding on that based off of his popularity at that point in time. And honestly, that wasn't a stretch. And it wasn't a stretch because Biden was doing very well. The American public still liked the Democratic Party. They were at their highest point since the fourth quarter of 2012, and their highest point tied for since 2006, when Democrats won back control of the United States Senate and the United States House in just one midterm election, and then went on to win the presidency two years later. Democrats were supposed to do better based off of everything that we had seen in early 2021, but it failed. And now entering into early 2022, we're seeing the exact opposite of what we saw just a year ago. The Democrats really need to do some soul searching. They need to see what helps them for 2022. I think the answer is obvious to many of those senators. I think the answers could very well be obvious to Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin, and they simply don't want to change the filibuster rule. But the only real hope for Democrats salvaging their uh, current majority in terms of holding on or winning control back in 2024 is through the Senate elections that are upcoming in winning two additional Senate seats to shift off the uh, political relevance from Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin and on and back to the Democratic Party. But that is also contingent on them winning control of the House. Otherwise, nothing will get done yet again, and, and it could screw them over in 2024. You see, there's no real easy way for Democrats at this point. When they failed to capture a number of those Senate races in 2020, it put them in a position where progress just didn't seem to be a very easy reality. 
you know, seeing the political party references changes, uh, political party preferences change, you can see this with the presidential approval. But again, Democrats aren't doing enough to keep themselves approved of. Uh, looking at the shifts that have occurred, it happened amongst both leaners and also those who are core identifiers with the party. I mean, if you are someone who was just exclusively a Democrat a year ago, there could be a chance that you are now identifying with the GOP or at least just narrowly leaning towards the Democrats or simply do not have a way to go. Because Democrats promised so much change and delivered so little. And while that has to do a lot with the fact that the GOP is intentionally blocking them, as we've seen from strategies real, revealed uh, from you know hot mics from representatives or things that have been explicitly stated by the Senate Minority Leader, Mitch McConnell, no matter what you see, obviously the GOP has to uh, approve a lot of these things in order for them to occur with the current filibuster rules in place, but it still looks negatively on the Democratic Party. To the average American voter, what they know is that Democrats are in office and nothing is happening. So, like many of these voters that answered this Gallup poll from the beginning of the year and the one at the end of the year, they are changing preferences. They are saying, we no longer want the Democrats in office, even if it isn't necessarily their fault that they aren't getting anything done, because the American voter will just go and blame whoever is at the top, regardless if it is their fault or not. And like it was a detriment for Donald Trump and the GOP in 2018, it will likely be to the detriment of Democrats uh, and Joe Biden in 2024, uh, and especially in this year, 2022, in what is expected to be an extremely crucial midterm election year. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already, and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch, and then a playlist for my 2022 election analysis videos. If you guys like the face cam, please let me know down below. I would love to know uh, what your opinion is on it. Uh, this is my first time doing it. I typically do uh, just live streams with my face cam on, but I am open to the possibility of doing them in future videos only if you guys would like me to. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow.